in space. No one can hear you scream. That's not entirely true. Most people agree that sound cannot travel through space. But why? Well, what is required for sound to travel? How does sound actually travel? What's going on? How can you hear me right now? Sound at its very basic is a mechanical wave, a pressure wave, an oscillation of high and low pressure. There are places in the wave where molecules are closely packed, and there are places in the wave where they're farther apart. And due to the interaction between these molecules, the wave of oscillating high and low pressure will propagate through space even though the actual molecules don't go very far. Molecules get close and then push neighboring molecules away, retreating to more comfortable lower pressure, which causes the neighboring molecules to push away their neighbors, which causes them to push away their neighbors and their neighbors, all the while retreating back to where they started. So without any flow of particles, sound travels through what we call a medium. Not too spicy, not too mild, but a collection of matter solid, liquid, or gas, that molecules are close enough to carry a pressure wave. Any wave has something known as a wavelength. It's the distance over which the wave shape repeats. High frequencies have really short wavelengths, and low frequencies have really long wavelengths. A 300 hertz tone in air has a wavelength a little over a meter, about, a, about this far. And since you can clearly hear 300 hertz, it has no problem moving through the air. Why? Well, at this wavelength, air molecules are a continuous medium. We don't have to think about individual molecules because there's just so many of them in this distance. But there is a limit to sound in air or any continuous medium. To be considered continuous, the wavelength of sound has to be much greater than the distance between the particles. This distance is roughly what is known as the mean free path the distance a molecule can travel before it runs into uh, another molecule. And for the air around us, the mean free path is 68 nanometers, or about 16 million times smaller than the wavelength of a 300 hertz tone. But what if we had a wavelength equal to 68 nanometers? That would require a stupidly high frequency of 5 billion hertz, we can only hear up to 20,000. The air particles are as far apart as the wavelength of sound, so sound cannot travel. There's no continuous medium, and air is just not dense enough to carry sounds as high as five billion hertz. All this is very interesting, Mike, but you promised us sound in space. The most commonly cited reason that sound can't travel in space is that there's no continuous medium. Why? Because space is a vacuum. But space is not a vacuum. There are stars and planets and galaxies full of dust and gas and wonderful, wonderful things. Even deep space has small amounts of hydrogen atoms faffing about. A perfect vacuum doesn't actually exist. Uh, deep space might have as many as a few hundred thousand hydrogen atoms in a cubic centimeter of space, or as few as one in a liter. Normally we have 300 quintillion air molecules in that space. The point is space has particles, multiple particles, particles that can interact. In outer space, the mean free path can be as little as a thousand meters or as much as 10 trillion meters. That's about a thousandth of a light year. So if we're interested in sounds with wavelengths several light years in length, space is a continuous medium. I'll say that again, space is a continuous medium. We don't have to think about individual molecules because there's just so many of them in a few light years that sound can travel as easily as 300 hertz can in air. But what could possibly produce a sound that low? How about a supermassive black hole at the center of the Perseus Cluster? In September of 2003, NASA's Chandra X-ray Observatory, that's right, we're talking about an X-ray telescope in space, that you can follow on Twitter, found sound waves in space. I actually follow a surprising amount of space telescopes on Twitter. Studying the supermassive black hole at the heart of the Perseus Cluster, a black hole big enough to hold together thousands of galaxies. Chandra actually found sound waves being emitted by the black hole and propagating through space. This is the lowest note anyone has ever recorded 
it's about two femtohertz or 57 octaves below middle C. A B flat, actually. If that note were played here in your living room, the wavelength would be 20 light years, which is about the distance from here to our nearest neighboring star, Alpha Centauri, and back. And there and back and there again. And since the black hole sent out the sound wave with the energy of a hundred million supernovas, there wouldn't be much left of your living room. I was gonna make a hobbit joke, but going there and back again to Ross248 is less snappy. Thanks for watching this episode of Acoustics. If you'd like to find out more information on sound in space and the Perseus cluster, check out the references link in the description. And an extra special thanks to Dan Russell for the use of one of his many awesome acoustics animations. You can check out his channel of awesome acoustics and physics demonstrations by clicking down here or the link in the description. Be sure to subscribe to The Point Studios, follow me on some social networking sites, and keep getting excited about sound. Mm -hmm.